Well, here we go. <laughs> I want to read a, a little verse here, a little story. You may have wondered about the title of the sermon, Saving the Starfish, the Starfish Story. You all know what starfish are, don't you? I, I, we tried to order some up, and we thought they'd be sizable so we could pass them out, so everybody would have a starfish. And we ordered a hundred. We were pretty optimistic, weren't we? <laughs> but when they got here, they were little tiny things, and we were afraid maybe the kids might swallow them before they got home or something, so we sent them back. But the story of the starfish is very, very important. One day a man was walking along the beach when he noticed a boy picking up something in the sand and gently walking across over and throwing it into the ocean. Approaching the boy, he asked, What are you doing? And the youth replied, Throwing starfish, throwing them back into the ocean. The surf's up and the tide's out, and, and if I don't throw them back, they'll die. Son, the man said, don't you realize that there are miles and miles of beach and hundreds of starfish? You can't make any difference. After listening very politely, the boy picked up another, and, and he walked across and threw it into the ocean. And then he smiled at the man and he said, you made a difference for that one. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. I, I was, I'm going to throw some accolades at you. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed that you're here. God bless you. I thought with the, somebody, I, I was talking to somebody earlier and they said, they thought maybe they sometimes called this Black Sunday. Wow. I got to share with you, and this isn't, this isn't any effort to try to look holy, but Roz and I both commented we'd about had about all of East, a Holy Week and Easter we could stand. <laughs> I'm, I'm firstly serious about this because it's time to put that stuff aside and get on with what the church and the kingdom of God is about. And it's about day-by-day -day kind of stuff where we're, where we're out there working and doing the things that we need, know we need to do that are good and honorable kinds of things. Oh, I tell you, I, I just, I marvel. It's, it's, it's time... Some folk are saying, I hear it around me. I hear it sometimes in our neighborhood. Oh, Easter's over, now we can coast a while. But I'm here to tell you this morning, it's not time to coast, it's time to, to take off our gloves and roll up our sleeves and say, it's time to get back to the basics. Real, regular work. That's what we call it, missions. And it begins right here. It begins right here in this community. And it begins with, with teachers and nurses and carpenters. And I could go on and on and name all the professions that are represented here. I've, I just hit the high points. So if I haven't mentioned your particular vocation or your particular craft, don't say, I got by on that one. Because <laughs> nobody gets by. I am impressed. Oh, God, help us. I appreciate so much our little gal and our little gals and guys when, when they're here because they're, they're the stuff of what life's going to be and we're, we're, we're helping establish some patterns for them. So, so our vocations are, are the place where where we begin to express our commitment, our mission, our vocation. Our, our families. Oh, wow. 
mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and grandpas and grandmas and, and it goes on and on and on. Our families are another place that, that we can demonstrate our commitment to the work that has been entrusted to us, the work that are our vocations. And I'm here to challenge you, and I'm here to challenge me to make our time worthwhile, to make it a, a service. And, and you know, and you know, let me use an illustration out of my own life, and 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 I use it because so many people are are amazed and and appalled, and I I use it because because I'm blessed by it. It isn't some great duty that I got to do, but some of you know I read in the schools. And I read in the schools because it's important to know how to read, to enjoy reading. It's a tragedy that we have children growing up who don't know how to read. How are they going to how are they going to discover the great great wonders of our world if they can't read? I don't even know how they can work on a computer if they can't read. So, so that's important. And the, the 20 years since, since I retired, and that's a long time, you know, takes my breath away every time I review it. But the 20 years I've been active in the schools, wherever I've been, reading, reading, reading. Yeah, and that's something any senior citizen can do if they're not blind, if, if they're able to read. But, but the list goes on, the list goes on and on and on in terms of the, of the kinds of, of work and the kinds of cooperation that we, can, that, that we can share. It, it comes in various ways and, and it comes in in our, uh, I better get my watch out here so Roz doesn't come up here and grab me by the scruff of the neck and tell me to sit down. Because we do have some time limits, although it's, we're more open than what we normally are. But, but, but I guess the thing I'm saying is, is that, that Easter's not over. The concept, the joy, the excitement, the wonder of Easter is about to start as we express it in our day-to-day -day lives. Each of us has a mission. Each of us has a, has a ministry to perform. And, and I challenge you to that. Uh, I challenge you to look for it, to be, to be ready for it, to, to bless it when it comes. And it, it may be helping with the scout troop. It may be doing a musical program. It may be, it may be the kinds of stuff that, that we depend on, the, the teachers and the nurses and the doctors and, and, and all the other people whose vocations we depend upon. And we need to bless it. I have a little something here that I want to share with you. And, and this is the kind of ministry I'm talking about. Here, here, take my hand. Maybe it'll be easier to get over this hard spot. Easier to stand steady. Easier to, to just stand up. I, I guess I might as well fess up. I really, I really need a hand. And if I offer you a hand and you take it, then I'll have a hand and we'll share hands. A hand's pretty wonderful. It can lift heavy rocks, it can, it can soothe the hurt, it can wipe away some tears, and it can blow a nose, and doctor a hurt, and straighten a tie, tie a bow. You know that hands clasped together can help both of us stand tall here and now. Take my hand. And the beat goes on, and the beat goes on. Another area that we can be supportive of each other is as citizens. You know, I, I despair that 
that things have to get totally out of hand before someone speaks up and says, hey, we shouldn't be doing this. We need to be there. We need occasionally to, to, to go to board to city council meetings and say, hey, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm trying to read and catch up, but, but I'm not sure we need to do a bunch more work at RUP. I'm sorry, I, I'm not against Rupp, and I'm not against our basketball, but I'm saying I know there are people in Lexington who are going hungry, who are desperate people, and God forgive us that we don't seem to care, because we're going to build a bigger basketball court. God help us. God help us. And I'm dependent on you, and I'm dependent on me to say, hey, hey, that ain't right. You know, a letter to the editor once in a while, a letter to your councilman, it makes a difference. It makes a difference, and, and that's what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about that vocational, that vocational commitment that that citizenship commitment that taking things seriously that we have a tendency to just sort of brush off oh yeah the holidays are over but the message the message is there I, I was I was disquieted. I was upset by the scripture lesson this morning, and that's why I made you experience it with me. And thank you for reading it so well. Jesus is looking around. This is his hometown, and they're running him out of town. <laughs> Isn't this the carpenter? Who does he think he is? Well, I'm here to suggest to you that, that we need some carpenters. We need some sons of Mary and Joseph. And, and we won't be big and spectacular like he was. But if you read the scriptures seriously, and, and I would encourage you to stick with Mark because Mark doesn't get all the all the you don't know how limiting it is for me to be up here because I can't use all the words that I normally use. <laughs> but you can't imagine how, how much crap some of the other evangelists have put on top of, of, of the story. And the story is about us folk. It's, it's our heritage. It's our, it's, it's our sexual preference. It's our commitment to each other. It's com our commitment to our community and to our world. Oh, God help us. God help us. So I challenge you this morning. Roz is starting to fidget a little bit. I, I'm, still, I'm still in the time limit uh, uh, for a Methodist, for a Methodist sermon. <laughs> And, and you got to know, for 40-some years, I was Methodist until I got straightened out and got here with you folks. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. This is where we, this is where we express this. And this is where we started. But out in our communities is where we do it. It's, it's relatively simple, and yet it's hard. And we need it at all levels. We need it at the level of, I hope I ever met Maya. We need it at Maya's level. God bless her. If we were as committed to, to helping as she is, passing the bulletins and helping with the communion and those sort of things, oh, that's wonderful. It's an inspiration to me every time I see her. But, but, and, and it goes on up, it goes on up till you get to be old goats like me and, and then you start 
then you start having to look for other ways that you can do it. But I do it by reading. I do it by taking seriously my community. Uh, I, I read it. I do it by, by being involved in community activities like, like the housing projects. The, the name isn't coming. That's what happens when you get old. You know things, and that word just won't snap into place. But you know what I mean. Anyway, I've talked long enough. The work now just begins. And that's the wonderful work that God recognizes and appreciates. That's what Jesus was all about. That's what he was, was going about the community, trying to do good, trying to help people pay attention. So, so be aware. Be aware. You may be rejected at some points. But that, that means we have to we have to go back and, and let Jesus encourage us and and take a note from him that even Jesus, even our brother Jesus, was rejected, but he kept doing the work. And that's for a message for us. God bless you. You are wonderful people. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm going to cry if I don't stop. Okay. What do we do now?